Welcome to another corporate governance video. In this video, we will consider one of the well-known theories of corporate governance. This is the resource dependency theory. In this video we will examine how the theory views the firm and how this is used to describe the role of the corporate board. So without wasting much time, let's get on with it. Before explaining the resource dependency theory, let's quickly recap what you have learned already about agency theory. In our previous video, we explained that agency theory defines corporate governance using the relationship that exists between the principal and the agent or the shareholders and the management. These two groups of individuals are seen to have conflict of interest due to their inherent selfishness. Where managers want bonuses and job security, shareholders simply want higher return on their investment leading to the principal-agent problem amongst other reasons. For this reason, the shareholders are described as risk-neutral while the management is risk-averse. Considering this agency arguments, the monitor and control of the management is recommended in agency theory. One way to achieve this is by appointing the board of directors. The board of directors are seen as mediators between the management and the shareholders. For the board of directors to be able to carry out this role effectively, they need to possess wide range of skills, so they don't just monitor and control the management, but are also able to contribute to the business. This is what resource dependency theory is about in corporate governance. Resource dependency theory in corporate governance focuses on what knowledge, skills, resources, and connections the board of directors bring into their role within a corporation. Through these skills, the board of directors are able to enhance firm performance while linking a corporation to the resources in its external environment. Organizations need access to the external environment, and boards of directors provides this access by co-opting such resources. Access to external resources through the board of directors allows the corporate organization to deal with environmental uncertainty. Examples of such resources include links to relevant markets including potential customers and competitors, access to capital and other sources of finance, provision of know-how and technology, and relationships with business, political, and other societal networks and elites. In this case of resource dependency theory, in sum, Co-opting external resources requires the presence of human and social capital through the board of directors. For this reason, resource dependency scholars often recommend board interlocks, larger boards, and board diversity. By board interlocks, this is when board members serve on more than one board. With access to the boards of other organizations, the board of directors bring into the board human and social capital. These benefits the organization in terms of enhanced performance through the skills, experience and the network's directors bring to the table. Apart from external interdependencies brought about through board interlocks, resource dependency scholars also recommend larger boards and board diversity. This serves as an indication of the ability of boards to provide critical resources to the firm, as they serve as a linkage between a firm and its environment. The recommendation of larger boards according to resource dependency theorists is because larger boards increases the possibility of connections a firm has with the environment, it enhances the chances of securing organizational-centric resources, and could result in better decision-making. As for diversity, this could be in the form of age, board members' tenure, gender, functional background, education and professional experiences. This too contributes to co-opting different types of resources useful to the corporation. This is just about it for resource dependency theory. However, there is a lot of research to test the recommendations of this theory. You are advised to explore extant empirical studies that have examined different aspects of this theory. So, what do you need to remember regarding this theory? First, every firm is influenced by external actors within its environment. For this reason, the firm needs access to external resources to improve its performance and to ensure it is not overly susceptible to environmental uncertainty. This is where the role of the board comes into play. The role of the board is to act as a bridge and a mechanism that connects the firm to its external environment. The board of directors also acts as a gateway for the corporate organization to draw on external resources for survival and growth, through non-executive directors, as well as the internal resources provided by executive directors. These resources provided by the board of directors may position the firm better in terms of managing risks in uncertain environments. The resources the board of directors bring into the corporate organization as summarized in this video is social capital through interdependencies or board interlock and human capital through skills, experience, competencies and knowledge made possible through board size and diversity. 
That will be all for this video on resource dependency theory of corporate governance. Thank you for watching. Please look forward to our other videos. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.